What's up, Simonics? Welcome to a new vlog episode. Because you were so interested in the kickoff ionic generator that I created, well, nobody ever said that, Simon. Well, anyway, I thought it would be interesting to share the architecture of this kickoff project because it consists of three different parts the web application, an API, an Angular schematics project. It might be a nice example to show you how all of these things can play together and how you maybe could structure your next application as well. So here we go with our Inside the Ionic Kickoff Generator episode. Let's start with a quick recap of the idea of this project. The general idea was that you or any developer should be able to easily generate an Ionic project with a lot of boilerplate code that you would have to create and waste hours on. I wanted to create something in the beginning, uh, start off with Firebase. So uh, you can easily put in your Firebase configuration and define how your project should look like. This includes uh, entities in the database. This, uh, yeah, I wanna discard this includes the layout of your application, so perhaps a menu, a tab bar, or anything like this. This includes perhaps authentication, having a login register page, password forget, um, guards in place for all the other places, a possible theme uh, already applied in terms of colors to your application, perhaps with a selection of predefined themes, and finally, a simple export that will give you a zip file which includes all of the code. So that was the idea. Um, so it should be easy for developers to generate this uh, initial um, project and bootstrap their new projects. The reality so far is that you can enter your Firebase credentials. Uh, you can uh, define some entities. The UI of this application is in general also uh, pretty horrible so far. Um, but the good news is that it works. And that was the most important part for me. I skipped all of the other optional things for now. So you can only define really just the basic entities and uh, yeah, and export your project to whatever email. Uh, na, 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 na. And once you start the export, you will receive a link to a hosted file. So let's try to understand uh, how all of this works together because I also want to get back into this project and I kind of forgot how things actually worked. Now pretty soon uh, the user would uh, get an email like this, download the file, which is an Ionic project, install uh, only the node packages and then run the application, which will look like this. The entities we defined before, we can see the labels, so we can enter data. And all of this would now be automatically written to um, Firebase if you check out the document, uh, the uh, Firestore database of the assigned project, then everything would work just out of the box. Now, how does all of this magic work? Let's start with the easy part, which is the front end. The front end was actually built using Angular, not Ionic, only Angular, because I knew that I just wanted to have a website for this project. And in that case, I simply pick Angular because I feel like that works a bit better. Uh, since I usually add to my Angular page um, um, Angular material, which looks in reality like these components. So you get the grid, um, you get nice cards, you get different elements that all look like material design from Angular on the web. And I kind of like this design. So I really just went with that. And basically this application doesn't do a lot besides capturing some input fields using a modal um, and then going through the stepper and then sending the data to our API. So front end Angular application hosted actually as well on Firebase uh, using Firebase hosting. Uh, I purchased the domain, I don't know where, perhaps Namecheap or something like this um, and connected everything to make it work. But setting up an Angular website and deploying it to Firebase is really the easiest part of the application. Actually what I did uh, as the last thing in the chain. Now, what happens once you've defined all the entities in your browser uh, and send them over to your backend. Well, um, the backend receives an object and the backend is a nest application. Um, yeah, that's interesting. We will go through this. 
Um, so it's a standard Nest.js application. Basically, the idea is to um, set up a project which you can go through with the different steps and configure. And this project has different values. So the backend type, this is very optimistic. So at some point I would like to generate also an SJS backend, uh, which authentication might be used, which template for navigation, tabs, menu, um, combined or a blank application, a theme. And then the most interesting part are actually the entities of the project. So I found a solution so far. So uh, every entity has a definition, a title, um, the assigned project to which it belongs so I can easily retrieve them. And perhaps also a parent entity or child entities. So you could have even some sort of relation between the different fields of um, this entity. And all of this is written into one object. And if we take a look at the um, generated project in the end, I will just bring this in as well. Um, so this is a project you would download. And I currently left this file in. I normally remove this from the server, but I left it in because this is a configuration file that basically holds all the information about the entities. And based on this information, I try to generate the project, but I'm already a few steps ahead. So. Once you go through the stepper, you define the entities, you set up everything, and at some point you click generate. What happens in the backend is that first of all, once you, um, where's the nest logic? Really need to get into this. Uh, once you trigger the build, a new job will be added to a queue. I um, thought about this in the beginning and this took me also some time, but I thought blocking the server wouldn't be an option if at some point in the future, um, a lot of people would generate projects uh, at the same time, I would need some kind of job queue. So I added a job queue, which will uh, go through the project and process each job after another. And what this queue now does or the generate project, which is actually the mighty uh, function of the backend is to um, write a file. So um, create a new folder and write some files. So write this configuration object, which we saw just a second ago. Also a setup file, um, change the mod so I can execute the setup file, write a command to our setup file, and then actually spawn a child process to first of all, copy a basic Ionic template uh, to our output folder, then dive into the output folder and finally call the setup file that we've written before. So the server really doesn't do that much at this point. Uh, it's only capable of copying over a basic Ionic project. So I added a template like Ionic 5, as you can see, really just a standard template um, with the standard logic that you might see. Within that project, I then write this configuration file and run some schematics. So this is now the third part and the really important part of the project because so far um, it's just a web application is generating a standard template. That's not really interesting. Interesting is the schematics and I might do a complete other episode on Angular schematics if you're interested in this because it is a really uh, challenging topic and I will just explain a few things about this. So um, I copied a few things together. I made a few things somehow work in the schematic. The idea of Angular schematics is that it will process your Angular application uh, since your Ionic Angular application is using Angular um, and change the tree of this project. So you can change the package uh, and you can change the module files. You can generate files, copy files over all of these things. So for example, um, I hope that's the first one. Um, I, no, that's actually not the first one. I'm really not sure which is the first one. I think this one to set up the project. So um, this, for example, it really is uh, challenging to write. But as you can see inside my uh, schematics, I also read in the configuration file so I can process all the entities. I can now write the keys uh, for Firebase directly into the environment. So everything is copied into the right place. Um, I can update the main modules and include all the necessary Angular stuff in the main module. So everything 
is included, Angular Fire, Firestore, authentication, storage, auth guard, whatever it might be, uh, update the environment. Um, and at some point, I think I also write, um, I'm really not sure what this is for. I'm just afraid to remove it actually. Um, at some point, I also write into the node dependencies, um, Firebase, Angular Fire with the latest node version um, to the package JSON. So this is the basic setup to include different things. And then finally, one other function or one uh, additional schematic runs to generate all the um, files. So here it becomes really interesting since these files now look super strange. So um, all of these things will be replaced during the uh, Angular schematic run. So <laughs> it's really challenging to write this as you don't really have a preview and everything is red. Uh, I don't know if you know about a better way, but that's just um, how I did it so far. So here we see the entity list, the entity details, and all of these name files will be replaced with the actual names from the red configuration. I actually called this in the beginning red rapid application development. So that's my internal name for the project. So this will now go through these fields, um, create the pages, create uh, the routing files. So the global routing uh, will also go through all the entities and create the path to the entities. So there's really a lot going on in these commands. And finally, uh, if we go back to our, nope, nope, yeah. If we go back to the generated project, we also see the setup file which now calls the Angular schematics. Um, this is also tricky since um, it basically uses the node modules of the Nest server since all of this runs on the Nest server. I guess that might be, work better if I had some kind of microservice uh, which would then generate everything. But here we can see it runs the first call, uh, add command, it runs ng add setup, it runs setup files, all of these will run with the setup, uh, which will then be removed. So it creates all the files in the project using the schematics. And the problem is usually are the schematics are an external um, project just like this. So I got the API, the web, the schematic. But since the API needs the schematics in a built version, and I really wasn't sure how to include this, I now have to copy over the changes from the schematic project into the API project. So I have the full folder of the build schematic in here so the server can actually access the schematic. And that's also the reason why you saw in this server package JSON all these dependencies to Angular and Ionic uh, in the package JSON, which wouldn't normally be used. That was a kind of quick run through our architecture. I hope you could follow. So web, really a simple application, passing information to the Nest API. Nest puts everything into a MongoDB object, then uh, copies over a standard template, writes some files into this project, and finally triggers the Angular schematics, which will actually do most of the magic uh, and change all the dependencies, the modules, the routing, generate files in the project. All right, that was our quick adventure into the architecture of the Kickoff Ionic project. I hope you enjoyed this kind of uh, review of the system and it gave you an idea about how this system works or how you could structure your next bigger application. For the next time, I've planned a lot of tasks. Um, actually, I don't know when I will do them, but they include things like upgrading the Angular Fire version, adding a lot of uh, types to all of the entities, um, hosting a preview of the result. This could really become uh, a much better project. I know a lot of you have already used this. Thanks again uh, for taking time to inspect this beta version. And if you haven't done, check it out, kickoffionic.com, I think. Um, link definitely below the video. And I would still love to get your feedback on this project or any ideas that you might have on uh, functionalities that should be included in this project. If you enjoyed our architecture review, please leave likes, hit subscribe, hit the bell icon so you always get notified about the latest episodes. And of course, 
Uh, if you want to see more like this, just let me know. So I might review another uh, application that I have built or that you have built. Thanks again for sticking with me in this video. I hope you enjoyed this. I hope you have a great week of writing awesome code, including an app and server or whatever it might be. And I will catch you next week. So happy coding, Simon. Simon.